Okay, uh, welcome to the tutorial on some basic Corel Painter 12 techniques. I'm not an expert with Corel Painter uh, by any means, but I think I can paint pretty well, and a lot of it is uh, very similar. So what I've got here, I've got the uh, Wacom, I think it's an Intuos 4 drawing tablet. I've got my pen set up, everything's plugged in with USB, and you all should be ready to go with that, okay? So uh, I've got Corel Painter here, in my dock, ready to go. You'll find that in the Applications folder. And what I want to do, typically I could go up, go to File, New, and create a new document just like I would with uh, Photoshop. But for today's lesson, where we're going to work on some basic techniques, I'm going to actually just take this Apple photo and drag it right onto Corel Painter, and it opens it up, just like with Photoshop. Okay? So, the first thing I want to do is I want to go in and I want to choose my brush. And I can click on this up here and this gives us all different types of brushes we got crayons chalk pencils erasers uh liquid ink you can get a, a ton of really cool different effects with all these but what i want to do is i want to choose acrylics which should be your first option here and then i want to choose opaque acrylic and that's just a really good standard brush for us to work with and i'm going to show you a technique uh called the old master technique that involves creating an underpainting and this is a traditional painting technique, and we're just applying this to a uh, digital program. So I'm going to click on Opaque Acrylic, and now I'm ready to go over here, and I can start painting. You can see I've already got this gray color selected. I can go over to this palette here, which you may or may not see. You might actually see something that looks set up like this, in which case you can choose your colors. But we're not going to actually use a whole lot of that today, okay? Now, again, I painted this stuff here. I don't really want that. I can take my pen turn it around, and the other end of it actually just acts like an eraser, which is pretty fantastic. So I'm going to erase that real quick. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to create a new layer, because I'm going to use this apple as a background to base my drawing off of. Okay, so it's like a reference image. So I'll go over here, and the new layer thing, again, like Photoshop, this looks a little bit different, click New Layer. And within that new layer, uh, I want to make sure it's highlighted blue so I can paint on it. It, okay, now rather than selecting our colors from over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on the keyboard and hold down the option key, and that brings up our eyedropper again, just like Photoshop. When I release that, I can begin to paint, and I want to just paint big areas of different color. Okay, this is for the underpainting. So I'm going to hold down option here, and you can see this whole section here is like a slightly lighter area than the rest of this out here so I want to click on that and drag around sometimes you grab a pixel that's kind of like too dark or like a little bit off drag around till you get a good color that's gonna kind of fill that area let go of option and then I want to paint in this whole area and it's gonna start off by looking kind of scrappy and kind of funky right it's gonna look like a sort of like a weird finger painting but you just want to keep pushing option and then painting in other areas and we can go over here and turn off our background you can see what we got so far. You can see I left a hole in that pink area too. So I want to go back there, hold down Option, select that color, paint that back in. Okay, so now I'm going to keep selecting colors as I go and just paint in really big areas. Again, I haven't zoomed in or anything like that. I'm not working on any details. And I just want to get in this underpainting because we're going to create layers on top of this that are going to um, be useful for... Uh, kind of layering this up and making it look really, really like a beautiful painting and make it look kind of 3D, have some depth to it. And you can see I'm kind of coming off the edges here too. It's getting a little bit sloppy. That's no bother, okay? The underpainting, we want to do it real fast. And it's kind of sloppy. But the purpose of this is, if you, if you check and we, uh, we turn off our background again, if you look at that, see how many uh, gaps there are between there? The idea is if we can take care of most of these gaps here and get like a general background color in for the apple, then when we go on to another layer and put on the details, it doesn't really matter if there's a lot of gaps there because uh, they'll be sort of just uh, filled by this underpainting and it will start to kind of layer up and look really lush, like I said, real lush in 3D. Okay, so let's go through here. Again, doing this real quick. Maybe we'll just get one color for the stem there. Doing it real sloppy. That's okay. Let's 
Mm -hmm. Oops, that color was no good. I'm going to undo Command Z, just like almost any program. Command Z on a Mac, Control Z on a PC. Okay, so I'm going to paint this all in. Keep sampling. You can see I'm sampling pretty quickly, switching back and forth between my samples. Okay, and I've got this so that I can tell it's mostly mostly pretty well filled in. All I want to do right now is turn off my background layer and I'm going to just sample these colors around it and I just want to fill in, i got to make sure I'm on that layer, I want to fill in these gaps just really quick just to make it so that when we um, start putting on our higher layers later on it's not going to cause any problems and we won't just uh, see a transparent background. Because ultimately we're going to turn off that photographic layer and this is going to be 100% a new painting of an apple. Okay. So, and there are uh, filters in Photoshop that can give you similar effects to doing this for uh, making it look like it was painted by a brush or something like that, but you just don't get that same kind of lushness to it. You can make it look like, okay, you could probably make it look about this good and, you know, quite a bit more realistic. The filters in Photoshop are kind of cool. But with this, you actually get like some um, some kind of really lively, like actual, you know, art making going on here. Okay, so I've got all those gaps filled in for the most part. That's actually pretty good. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn on my background layer, and I am going to create a new layer. Okay, and up here, what I want to do is I want to go in with a smaller brush and start adding areas of detail. I'm going to focus in on this area around the stem here because that's where a lot of detail is going on. Okay, um, let me turn off my layer one now. Okay, and I got to make sure layer two is selected um, so that I'm actually painting onto layer two. I want to go in with my magnifying glass, and rather than Z, the shortcut for it here is M on the keyboard, or you can find it in your toolbox over here. Uh, the brush is, that's an eraser, that's the brush, and the shortcut for that is B. So I got M for my magnifying glass. I can click and drag over this area, just like in Photoshop, release, and now I'm zoomed in. Now if I go back to brush, you can see my brush is pretty large, right? I don't want my brush to be that large. So I can go on the uh, drawing tablet, and there's this little thing that looks like an old school click wheel on an iPod, a uh, very old iPod, right? And if you click in the middle of that, you can bring up this. I'm not 100% sure if you're going to be seeing uh, this on the screen capture, but when I click through that, it gives me options for zoom, cycle layers, brush size, or canvas rotation. I want to click that to brush size, and then when I roll my finger around that to the left, counterclockwise I should say, or clockwise to the right, the brush gets either larger or smaller. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to pick a relatively smaller brush here and go through and do the exact same thing. I hold down Option, I click, and I'm going to start painting levels of detail. All right, Painting blocks of color. And I've got this nice highlight on that little edge there. Again, I didn't like that color, so I'm going to undo. I'm going to click on that so I get a really light, light color. Kind of paint that in right around there. And again, this is happening kind of splotchy, kind of quick, but that's okay. Like, we're going to have this be painterly. And then later we'll go in on another layer, we'll zoom in even further, and we'll add more levels of detail. And at this point, I don't need to make sure that these are 100% edge to edge like I did with the last layer because the underpainting is going to take care of us on that. Okay. So I'm just getting these kind of big areas blocked in. Oh, didn't like that color. Let's try it a little bit lighter. Okay. And the direction of your brush stroke can also be really important. You can kind of show contour by having these uh, brush strokes kind of curve around into the apple here, which is uh, something you can definitely do. I'm being a little sloppy about that right now. Okay, let's get a little bit more here. Okay, now I'm getting to a point where I'm tempted to take a look at that zoomed out. Okay, it's starting to look like it's uh, a little bit painted, and I'm going to turn on my layer one and turn off my canvas. And now you can see, if 
and alternate on and off layer two, it's starting to look pretty nice, right? Now you can see the stem is way too big on layer one. So I can go back to layer one now. So oops, select layer one. It's a little bit tricky with uh, out the mouse. The pen is not really great for navigating. Push M to go back to my magnifying glass. Drag over here. And now on my layer one, I can go back to brush, B for brush. Oh, I thought that's not working for my eraser. I'm gonna push E for eraser. Ah, it's not E. Ah, <laughs> sorry, I'm breaking down. I'm just gonna click on the eraser. I'm not sure what the shortcut is for that. And I'm just gonna erase that around there and just kind of clean up that edge there. Okay. Okay. Command zero to zoom out. I'm gonna turn my background layer back on. And typically, what I would do now is go through this entire painting, zoomed in on different areas and do the exact same technique. I'd turn off layer one, go to layer two, select layer two. Oh, there it goes, okay. And then I would push B for brush and adjust my size, again, with that little scroll wheel if I need to. Sample and paint, right? Go through here and start putting down more layers of paint. Now, what I'm going to do just for the uh, sake of this tutorial, just so I can speed this up for you a little bit, because it's starting to take a little bit of more time than I planned, is I want to go back, I'm going to push G for my grab tool, click and grab over here, and I'm going to zoom back in on this area, and I'm going to show you one more level of detail on this area. So I'm going to just really get in on that stem. So I'm actually going to go back to M, magnify, and let's zoom in right there. Go to my brush. I'm going to create yet another layer, okay, and then scroll my brush down very small, sample that color, and just continue sampling colors. And at this point, I can start getting in some areas of detail. I'm not trying to get just everything blocked in entirely in one color because this is uh, fairly zoomed in, okay. Get some cross directional lines on here, show a little bit of contour. Okay. Also, I got things like highlights on the Apple. I can click here. Actually, I can even click on pure white and add a couple little spots of pure white. If I want to make the Apple shinier than real life. Okay, click on my grab tool. I'm going to go down here. Add a little bit of these highlights here. Also, the brush is pressure sensitive, so that's something I didn't mention. Uh, the harder you push, the bolder it goes. The lighter you push, again, with a small brush, it's not a good example, but it does actually uh, paint a little bit lighter. Okay, Let's zoom out a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to put back on my other layers. Okay, now that background layer is going to need to be continually cleaned up as well as the layer beneath it. What you can see is that I have started to create something that layers up very nicely. At this point of the tutorial, what I'd like for you to do is just kind of go on ahead and finish the apple, make the apple look 100% as realistic as you can. Do it at least three or four layers of resolution. Make sure you get that underpainting in really, really well, and make sure that you're not afraid to zoom in on areas and work with a very small brush, okay? And thank you for watching.